All right now, everybody, let's get our dumb bitch juice ready. If you clicked on this video, you definitely saw the title. Today's gonna be a lot. Just some things I would love to address before we really just dive on into it. One, please ignore that. Two, I'm so nervous. If you find yourself relating to anything I talk about in today's video, you're not alone. But also, learn from my mistakes. I just realized that the air conditioner will be going on and off throughout the duration of this video. So I'm really sorry about the difference in audio. I've really been trying to like look back on experiences I've had and wonder why I was even in that position to begin with. And I think a lot of my issues stem from having really bad insecurity issues. I have been a very, very insecure girl for as long as I can remember. Aside from being super insecure and just not feeling any type of confidence at all, I never got the chance at all to like date or have my first heartbreak or have a high school sweetheart or do anything like that. I rarely even talk to boys ever. I didn't even have like a guy best friend. When you finally do go out there and start dating and getting to know guys, you don't really know the games they play or you don't even know social norms of dating at the time. I just had no experience in anything like that whatsoever. I was so naive. I would always tell myself, once I get a boyfriend, the game is gonna change. My life is gonna be so much better. I always thought that the one thing missing from my life and the one thing that would make me happy is getting a boyfriend. This desperation is truly what set me up for disaster. I'm gonna be talking about a relationship I was in, the only relationship I've ever been in. And I don't wanna come off as like I'm complaining about everything that went wrong or that I'm on here just trying to talk bad about the person. That's not at all what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to explain where my head was at the time and why I ended up in the situation that I did. I think this is something that maybe a lot of people go through that you don't realize people go through. And maybe if I share, it can prevent it from happening to someone else. I don't want you to think that this video is me looking for sympathy because it's not. Again, I'm just trying to share my story. I made the executive decision to download Tinder. So I think Tinder has a, a pretty big reputation for just being a garbage fire. Again, you have to remember, zero experience. I didn't, I didn't know. And I just kind of assumed it would be like the movies, you know, because why not? That's life, right? I matched with this guy and I remember he wrote such a long, detailed thing and it stood out to me because I was like, wow, <laughs> he must be such a good guy. <laughs> I wish I could remember what it said, but I just remember being so captivated. He really took the time out to write this whole long paragraph for me, just me. <laughs> okay. And he pulled the, I'm never on this, can I get your number? And I was like, sure. Maybe like the second text he sent, he was like, I'm gonna FaceTime you. And I, <laughs> I said, um, do you mind if we like not do that? I'm just messy right now. <laughs> and he said something like, I don't care what you look like. <laughs> I'm not shallow like that. I would never judge you on the way that you look. I know that women aren't in makeup 24 seven. I think it's beautiful either way. I said to myself, this must be Prince Charming. He's so nice and polite. Anyways, we FaceTimed. And he was like, do you want to sleep on FaceTime with me? I was like, what? People do that? Sure, because I didn't want him to not like me. So I was like, yeah. Now that I look back on it, I realize that the beginning of our relationship definitely had some love bombing involved. If you don't know what that is, it's essentially when you first get together with someone and they want to see you 24 seven, they want to talk to you 24 seven. It feels like it's an instant great connection and you feel so happy, but at the same time, it's like weird. I didn't know that this was a thing. <laughs> like I just thought, wow, he must really like me. But I also was like confused but we ended up seeing each other all the time. And in my head, I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. This is exactly what I've been waiting for. But living it feels very different. It just always felt off. I was like, I'm with this guy, but he doesn't seem like he's present. I don't know if he actually likes me. I remember feeling that 
from the very beginning. I like waited to say something or bring it up because I didn't want to be annoying. I can't blame him for this because I was naive. I didn't know. In my mind, in my thought process, I was like, <laughs> this is my boyfriend. Like we see each other all the time. I'm not talking to anyone else. He says that I'm the only girl he's talking to. So we're together. We've probably been dating for like two months and I saw him post something really inappropriate on a social media account to another girl. And I saw it and I was like, what is this? I never set boundaries with him. Therefore, it was just me always getting hurt. And I tried to set boundaries, but I was just talked out of it. This exact moment is when I should have ran for the hills because he didn't even feel bad about it. He didn't apologize. He made a joke out of his apology and was laughing about it online. He tagged the girl and said, sorry, I had to delete it. I got in trouble. Laughing emoji. Just something as little as that should have been a very clear and obvious red flag. But the thing is, I was so hurt by it, but I didn't want to lose him because I was already so attached. And the more that you find stuff out that makes you feel stupid or embarrassed, the worse you get, you get, like you're obviously gonna get resentful. You're gonna start to second guess everything. You're gonna question everything. You're gonna put your investigative glasses on, which I fully, fully fell into that role. And I hated that. I still remember what it feels like to log onto social media if I wasn't blocked and find his profile and just be so scared to see what I would find because I would find something all of the time. And if I didn't, it's because he made a profile behind my back and blocked me from it so that I couldn't see what other girls he was talking to. I remember expressing how hurt I was just at that one situation and he just laughed it off. He didn't care. And I think I was just in that role of I care for him so much and if I show him that I'm good to him, he'll grow more respect for me. A clown. I know how tempting it can be to be that girl, that ride or die girl who will put up with so much and still be there. She still gets the guy, but she still gets hurt. That was me for so long. He never cared about my feelings at all. And then he would tell me that I was wrong for feeling a certain type of way. You're so sensitive. Life's not a fairy tale. It shouldn't be <laughs> me being sad all the time and finding stuff out behind my back all the time. I feel like this is coming off as me complaining, but I'm trying to make it clear. In the beginning of our dating phase, I was an angel. <laughs> I really was. The only thing that he said was me being a lot was me coming to him and saying, hey, something feels weird. I would rather you tell me and be honest with me. If you don't like me like that, that's fine, but let me know. And I would always get the same response. No, I really, really like you. I just want to take my time and make sure that, you know, I'm really, I'm really sure about us. Months and months later, he finally asked me to be his girlfriend, which meant nothing to him. So I, what was the point? I had feelings of uncertainty the whole time. I also had never dealt with my insecurity issues that I've always had even prior to him. And that's just something I regret going into a relationship doing because I just never felt secure. One, at the things I was seeing on social media tore me up. And two, he was very vocal about his dating past. So it wasn't too long after we were official that I found out that he had been going out with other girls behind my back, talking to other girls actively, video chatting girls online from all across North America. Once resentment starts and once really low blows are said, it only gets worse from there. By the time I found that out, there was already so much that we had gone through in a negative way. We fought all the time because I was always vocal and he didn't want to hear it. He didn't want to deal with it. And me, I just wanted honesty and it was so frustrating to me because you know when something is not right, you just do. We never had a honeymoon phase. There was always problems, always arguments. It was one of those situations where we'd fight and then we'd make up the next day and things would be great. And then they'd go back to being terrible. We were Ronnie and Sam. <laughs> 
but I had really been helping him out at that time because he was dealing with personal things. I would go on my lunch break to like do stuff to help him out. And then I found out that he had time available to do these things and he begged me to help him because he said he had no time, but he was secretly out on dates with other girls while I was giving up my lunch break to go help him. After I found that out, I made a fool out of myself on social media and i just wanted to get revenge on him because i was so fed up i was so hurt i didn't know how to deal with my emotions and i went out and hooked up with other guys to get back at him i just felt so many different le levels of betrayal that i wanted him to feel that doing that didn't make me feel any better because it didn't solve anything and it just made my life harder because he found out he basically said that what he was doing was not as bad do people have different opinions about it yes both of us were completely in the wrong for me i was hurt because he was trying to emotionally connect with multiple girls which i found out later throughout our entire relationship for years i hooked up with a few guys wanted nothing to do with them left but he used that to like shame me and then somehow it got twisted to what he did was okay because what i did was physical he would say things during this time like i'm the only guy who's actually stuck by your side why do you think all the other guys you dated just treated you like a piece of me even though i know now he didn't have good intentions when he was telling me this, I was like, wait, <laughs> he kind of has a point. It made it so that he made me believe, I guess, like through his words, that what I did really was worse and that he didn't deserve what I did to him, but at least he wasn't physical with anybody. When in reality, no. And things just continued to get more toxic. I know toxic is such a buzzword and everyone uses it for everything, but we were very, very toxic for each other. So after that whole cheating incident on both of our ends, tensions were at an all-time high and things ended up getting very bad. Trigger warning, I ended up getting physically hurt and he ended up getting in a lot of trouble. Every single person in my life at the time was like i don't know what else it's gonna take for you to see where this is heading but i really don't support this what i was going through was the farthest thing from a healthy relationship we still had times where we were close or intimate or what i thought was happy i didn't want to lose that and i saw potential in us and he would say things like i'm not going to give up on us and so i felt like i just didn't want to lose whatever it was that we had i still loved him and i didn't want to lose him um it was at that point where i kind of started to like withdraw i just hid him so if friends would be like are you still seeing him i knew that they all hated him so i just kept quiet about it because i just thought it would be easier and same with my parents and so i just i still believed that things would change and be different i was just like it's okay they'll come around he'll come around things will be better you guys will have a good future together it was like six months later i got hurt again and we were just always fighting and i didn't know what to do there were times where I was like, do I need to get a restraining order? Do I need to file for harassment? And it sucks because I didn't know what to do. Like he would, he just knew how to like make me feel fearful in every situation. And he used all the things that he knew about me against me when we were fighting. I just felt like so, I didn't know what to do because I always felt sad and I always knew that stuff was going on behind my back. And then when I tried to talk to him about it, he would just get so angry with me for bringing it up or that I didn't trust him, but I had every reason not to trust him. He would call my work, he would go to my friends, give my friends a hard time. He would call my grandma's house at like all hours of the night. And when I got hurt those both times and he ended up getting in trouble, he just made me feel so bad about it. He was always resentful towards me and I just never trusted him. It basically just got to the point where he felt like anything he would do to me was nothing as bad as him getting in trouble for the physical stuff that he did to me. I've just been feeling a lot of 
guilt about it because I didn't want to hurt him or put him through anything like scary like that when it comes with legal issues but there were literally sometimes I thought I was gonna die I don't want to go into detail but like it's so gross because it's like the more it happens to you you kind of get desensitized desensitized to it Ugh. it's just never okay and there were some times where like I knew it was coming and I was just so angry about it because he would do anything to protect his lives. Anything. The whole relationship, we were together for years. He was always talking to people behind my back and I just don't get it. <laughs> the first time I found about him cheating on me, yeah, I went behind his back, I hooked up with guys, and then worse drama happened. And I was like, you know what? This is gonna be a huge wake up call for both of us. I thought it was gonna be one for him, it wasn't. I was like, okay, if I'm gonna stick by this guy's side after all of this, obviously I'm gonna try and make this relationship work. That's not gonna work if I'm out there being unfaithful. He never stopped. You get to know someone and how they work and how they lie how they are. I found out that he pretty much had a whole other girlfriend behind my back. He let me go through his phone one day, pretty much had a whole other girlfriend. and He was doing the same things to her, blowing her phone up, accusing her of cheating while he had a girlfriend. And this was like when I thought things were good between us. I was like, wow, maybe we are heading towards a better future. Nope, he was out dating other girls. He texted her saying, I thought I was in love with you. After being with me for how many years? It's sick. Imagine how dumb I feel. Imagine. I wouldn't want you to imagine because I would never want you to go through that. It's hard looking back on it because I... I would have done anything for him. Like, I cared about him so much. And I just wish things could have been normal. But he never... He never liked me. <laughs> If you really want to be with someone, if you really want to have a future with them, why keep dating other people behind their back? Like you, you yourself have to get to a point where you're like, okay, what am I doing? Things just got so bad until eventually I needed to protect myself and I got a restraining order because I don't know what would have happened. I was so tired of the abuse. When we were still talking, he said that it was always me. I was the one causing all the problems because I could never trust him. I wonder why. <laughs> I don't, like I'm not saying I was the easiest girl to ever deal with. I was, I'm sure I was extremely annoying. I was clingy. I always needed reassurance. I had huge insecurity issues. Don't cheat on a person. Don't abuse them. Just be like, I can't do this. Like, I don't understand what would have happened. Would we get married one day and I would just get all the abuse while he would leave and date girls behind my back? It's terrible. Obviously, I can't speak for him, so I don't know what his real feelings were. We were together for years and I still to this day don't know if he actually even liked me, let alone loved me. It's hard to say that you love a person and then you think about it and you're like, well, did they really love me if they, if they did all of this to me? if they wanted to hurt me, if they didn't care about losing me. But the only person who knows his own feelings is him. I loved him. He was my first love. I definitely was not his first love. He loved many women before me and many while he was with me. So that's embarrassing. Even though it's like a real sickness. <laughs> it's a real sickness because this person puts you through so much and hurts you so much but you still have feelings for them like those just don't go away we went through all of that and i still don't even know if he ever cared i understand in the beginning whatever he was dating around sure but when i stuck by his side after i was the one that got physically hurt and i helped him in every way i could i still got cheated on i still got abused and I actually was looking forward to a change and I thought I thought that we were gonna make it work. I'm really sorry, this is probably so much. <laughs> You're probably like, delete your channel and go to therapy. <laughs> I don't know, it's something I still have to deal with and think about all the time. 
still have much work to do internally about it, as you can see. Being able to reflect on all of that and honestly how it could have ended, it's really scary to think about. You should never let someone make you feel like all of the different ways I felt. Like I felt so helpless. I could never amount to any of his ex-girlfriends or the girls he followed on Instagram or the girls whose pictures and videos he's had saved in his phone who were just random people i just was so desperate for love that i thought what that was was love and i know that it's not <laughs> i wanted to tell my story because i know i'm not the only one who goes through this maybe you have friends that are going through it and you don't even know or maybe you're going through it and i know how hard it is trust me if someone is showing you their true colors, you have to really pay attention. I guarantee you, he doesn't think he did anything wrong. He would say, yeah, I cheated, but that was then, while still cheating. <sighs> it's just a hopeless cycle that you can't break. You can't place your happiness in someone else. You have to have that on your own and the rest will follow. It's so exhausting just wanting someone to love you back so badly and they just don't. The longer you stay, the harder it gets, the more attached you get, the more it messes you up. Here is a perfect example. <laughs> you just have to know who you are and set boundaries for yourself and know that your feelings are valid. I was always told that I was being too sensitive, that I was doing too much, that I was being a victim. I wish I knew more then about resources because I never wanted to get anyone in trouble. I just wanted peace for myself and to stop getting hurt. If you're in a relationship and you notice red flags or things that are just off or your intuition is telling you something, listen. Address it to the person based on how they respond and how they react. You know, if abuse happens, you need to leave at the first sign. I know it's so difficult and hard because you care about the person and you love the person and then they tell you it's never gonna happen again but it always happens again. It's heartbreaking, it's devastating. It's devastating to have spent a certain amount of time with somebody and then it just all goes away. You have to put yourself first and do what's best for yourself. Love definitely messes with you um, but I... <laughs> I have seen others who have healthy, beautiful relationships and I can only aspire to have that one day. <laughs> I definitely feel like you and I are now on a different level. We have bonded. You've seen me cry. What's next? <laughs> Thank you for being here and listening. If this happens to you, I pray that it doesn't, but you need to recognize the signs if you can. And I would also say just be patient and try to have some understanding if you have friends that are going through it because it's so easy for us all to say, I'd never let myself become a part of that. It can be hidden as someone so great and then all of a sudden things change. I hope that he finds happiness and love and I hope he finds someone who he never wants to hurt or cheat on or lose and just I hope he has the happiest life possible and has cute little kids. I just want the best for everyone. I want the best for me. I'm going to be heartbroken and devastated well into <laughs> the foreseeable future, but it's okay because I'm really just trying to make myself happy. I hope you took something valuable from this video. Being a part of a toxic relationship makes you more toxic. Remember that. If you learn from them and you're able to share wisdom and knowledge about it, then it had to happen for a reason. Oh, one other thing that I forgot to mention. As a part of your boundaries, make sure you never do anything you don't want to do. Even if you think that it'll make your partner happy for that exact moment in time, don't do it unless you know that they would never hurt you. Um, because like, let's for example say if you make some videos with them of inappropriate nature, uh, they'll probably use that against you and threaten you all the time to post them on the internet. Thank you again for being here and listening. Love you all so much. I will see you next time.
Bye.